we have a field of beets that is waiting to be harvested but no equipment to do it so we need to go to the store and lease some stuff hello again i am jim bob and welcome back to altenstein for some more deutz farm just making our way into the little village over here now so that we can lease the equipment we need to actually get those beets out of the ground we've been sat there for quite a while now just waiting to be harvested uh, and now we actually have just enough and i mean just enough money to actually be able to make those lease costs we won't be doing beets again for a while after this so it's a shame that uh, we don't have a little bit more to work with considering how expensive the leasing costs are for these bits of equipment but you know it's a free field of beets we haven't had to you know pay for a seeder to plant them we haven't had to fertilize them I think oh have we fertilized them Let's check, actually. What is the fertiliser state of those beets? Oh, they're not fertilised at all. Ooh. Okay, well, I tell you what, we can work around that. Um, before we go any further, I'm just going to jump back into this. I don't like to do that, but I uh, don't really have much of a, an option this time out need to top this up with fuel as well. What we're going to do is we're going to uh, get our fertilizer spreader and we're going to put some skinny wheels on this so we don't damage the the beets and we're going to spread some fertilizer over that and at least boost the yield by 30%. And like I said this is going to be our one and only beet harvest for quite some time so it makes sense for us to try and get the most out of them that we possibly can. And even if that means we're only getting an extra 30%, you know, 30% is 30%, you know. That's quite a big, uh, a big percentage jump, so. Right. Let's uh, customise our wheels. Put on narrows. There we go, make our way back in. Move our way around the back of the trailer there. Our uh, spreader is just behind these double doors. There it is. Do we have anything in here? Uh, a little bit, but not much. And we're going to need to put some more pellets in there, so let's top that up. But I don't want to go too crazy on it. That should be enough. Because I am thinking about replacing that unit with something else. Now, where are our beats? Just there. So we want to go that way. Oh, there's no lid, is there? I thought there was a lid on the back of that thing, but apparently not. Unless it's down. No. No, there's no lid. Uh, oh, I nearly pulled out in front of traffic again. This is why I like to look. Because I do inadvertently, inadvertently just start causing uh, traffic uh, collisions. Right, so... little boost on these. If I'd thought about it, I should have... Uh, mind you, having said that, we started with our fields pretty much ready to go, didn't we? So, uh, yeah, that's why we didn't add fertiliser to it, but I, if I thought about it, I could have made sure that we had at least had it fertilised in the future. Um, I think if I remember rightly, when I first started this farm, I was considering just ploughing over these beets, and it was only the fact that we had pigs that made me stop and hold off and think, well, we just lease the equipment at a later time. And that was about as much consideration as I put into it. If I thought a little bit harder, I could have made sure that they were at least, you know, uh, at least stage two. 
Right, so turn the plow filter off. There we go. We're at stage one. So it's better than nothing. It's not perfect. It's still less than it should be, but at, at least it'll give us a, a, a better yield, a better return on our eight and a half thousand euro investment of harvesting equipment for just one small field. Let's get our spreader back in the cupboard. skinnies off. I'm trying to think if I'm going to need them again. Probably not. Yeah, let's take the skinnies off. Go back to regular standard wheels. There we go. I'm going to leave this here for a moment, like so. Let's jump back over to the Fortis. So, there isn't really room to uh, run the topper and the harvester at the same time. The beacons are on, good. Uh, so we're going to do the top first, and then once we've done that, we'll come back, drop this off, collect the harvester, use that and then drop that off as well. Now the harvester only has a 6,000 litre tank and on most fields that is nowhere near sufficient but this isn't a particularly big field so I'm guessing we're going to have to empty it but I'm not sure how many times, probably not that many. Uh, let's lower that down. Remove the tops off these beets. I need to put a headland or two in. Careful I don't crush that corn. That was close. There we go. So now we can run up and down this field, removing these tops. Prepping the field ready for the harvest. So you can see we've got this custom beet texture. These leaves do look a little bit different, a little bit more vibrant. Different shade of green, slightly different leaf shape as well. They look a little bit thicker, a little bit bigger than uh, the standard sort of giant's texture. I do like them. But beet harvesting has always been one of those... Uh, same with spuds, it's been one of those jobs that some people love it, most people don't. <laughs> Some people will do it just to get it done. Uh, they'll tolerate it. Some people really, really enjoy it. Some people hate beet farming and potato farming with an absolute passion because it is so slow a process. There's so much work involved for you know what is essentially very little reward. You know, you can harvest huge, insane amounts of beets and get very little back for them as an overall total. I mean, we're doing beets on Big Bud Farm, and uh, you know we did that harvest, and we had about 680,000 liters of beets in storage, and it got us, uh, I think, less than 200,000 dollars. <laughs> it really wasn't that much for the sheer amount of work that was involved in uh, in removing all those beets from the field. It's just a huge volume crop, so 
you know, it's not worth a lot. You have to sell in mass volume, but unfortunately, you know, the price does take some pretty serious nosedives if you start selling a lot. So you kind of end up almost at the mercy of great demands with with beets and potatoes if you're not careful because you can crash the market really quickly. I mean, one way around that is to use the uh, the um, the root crop sale point as a mod. You know, you've got the two versions of the building. One is a storage building which holds uh, two million liters, uh, and the other is a sell point. Uh, same configuration, just instead of having an active uh, tip zone for uh, storage, it has an active tip zone for uh, for sale instead. It has two actually. It has one for you know loose product, and then another one for pallets of beets. And you can sell spuds there as well. Uh, and that usually has better prices than the in-game markets. So that's one way around it. It's a little bit cheaty. Uh, to just sell everything there because you can get some much much higher prices there than you can at traditional sort of root crop outlets but it is one way to kind of compensate yourself if you are putting in all that time and, and effort and money because the beet harvesting and spot harvesting equipment isn't cheap I mean you can see here we've got this tiny little rooster harvester that we've uh, leased it's costing us 8,000 euros to lease it has a very small grain tank and, it, and to buy one it's 88,000 euros it's extortionate if I for something so small all right there we go there's the topper returned time for the harvester now this is where it's going to get really awkward as well given the positioning of that field and the fact that we have that ditch this is going to be really quite tricky in places. I'm going to have to do this in third person, I think. Otherwise, I am going to end up either in a, in a field that doesn't belong to me, ripping up someone's crop, or you know, stuck in a hedge, or stuck in a ditch. Or potentially, <laughs> depending on how bad a job I do with my driving, potentially all three at the same time. <laughs> so let's go into third person. See, oh, caught on the on the stone wall there. Ah, oh, that's not good. I was trying to get a nice wide line so I could get over the bridge, and uh, ended up crashing. All right, uh, I need to unfold this. I think. Oh no, should literally just turn on and lower. That's it. Uh, it's the pipe out I'm thinking of. There we go. That's the only unfolding that this thing needs to do. I do like watching the beats go through this thing. You know, following the conveyor system. It's one of those bits of machinery that I love to get close-ups on, but it is awkward to use. another headland Ooh, see what I mean about nearly driving into someone else's field All right, let's try and I'm not looking forward to this bit at the bottom as well with the ditch given how expensive it's being for us to uh, actually get these beets out of the ground. I don't want to miss a single one. I want to get every single one of them out of the ground. Normally when I do beets, if I lose one or two I you know, don't harvest one or two and just have a few of them just sticking up the edges of the field, I'm quite happy to cultivate those into the field next time round. Not this time. <laughs> we spend so much money just to pull a few, a few small beets out of the ground that I'm making sure I get my money's worth this time. Oh, yeah, we end up in the ditch. Look, I'm worried about. It's so tight here. This is not a good field for beets at all, but it's such a small field that it's kind of what else do you put on it? Well, it's all well and good when it comes to the planting, but when it comes to the harvesting, that's when it becomes a problem. And you've got this big lumbering rooster. 
that you've got to tow into some quite nasty, tight spaces. That's certainly less than ideal. get into a nice little rhythm here. That's our thumbnail. Yeah, I am going to do another headland here at the bottom and it's just too close to that ditch. Plus there was that one beat that I missed. <laughs> I said I'm going to get them all. I meant it. There it is. And this thing's almost full, so we're going to need to empty any second as well. Uh, let's try and make our way up the hill. In fact, you know what? I'm just going to uh, go back up to the top. It's going to empty on that side, isn't it? Alright, let's... Can I... Reverse in behind the combine? Really? Luckily, you know, once we've removed the tops, we can drive over the top without fear of damaging the beats. He says, looking to see what the hell has happened to all the beats that were just here. Have they changed that? Or have I actually got this thing down still? I think I must have had it still down. There we go. Hit 6,000. So, um, let's pipe out. We're going to need to bring the aggro star over the hill so that we can empty. Let's turn the engine off. Let's run back. Grab that. Make sure I don't get run over. See what I mean about it being hassle for such a tiny little field? The money that we're spending and the amount of time and effort that's required actually get those beats out of the ground is it's an awful lot this is why a lot of people just don't really care about beats at least on a small scale because they are so much hard work you only really worry about root crops if you have animals I think go. That's 6,000 litres. Let's uh, engine off on the Agro Star, jump back into the Fortis. Yeah. <laughs> Ending up in the ditch again. Ah, oh, Christ. Alright, let's uh, pipe down again. Start eating up these beets again. Oh, look at it bouncing all over the field. That's the ground response, I think. The fact that it's going from uh, a cropped ground to uh, you know, a field without crop in it. I think that's why it's bouncing around so much. like to get at least at least 12,000 litres of this field I don't think we're going to um, well you never know we might get 12,000 litres in total we've got six it's just a question of whether we can fill this up again before 
we finish the harvest. I just don't know on that. I think we might possibly make it. It's going to be tight. <laughs> He's just bouncing all over the place. You can see the beats though, just going through that sort of uh, under tray at the moment at the bottom there. Oops. Working their way along and then coming up the side there, dropping down into that bottom conveyor and then feeding into the bucket at the top. It's it's kind of cool I think to watch the beats actually go through that bit by bit by bit, but. There you can see them at the bottom. Missing another line. Like I said, I'm making sure that we're getting everything off this field. <laughs> it's the amount of hassle and the amount of money involved to do this. I am making sure I'm getting everything. Nothing gets left behind. No beat gets left behind. That might be the strap line actually for this episode, no beat left behind. <laughs> I can't like that. Uh, yeah, I think we are actually going to just squeeze <coughs> just a fraction over 6,000 uh, off this uh, remaining bit here. into something for a second there. It's just uh, a bump. Oh, come on. I'm stuck in a ditch. Really struggling. Oh, come on, come on. <laughs> uh, have I mentioned how much I hate beet farming on this field? <laughs> Six thousand. Uh, so we're going to have just a tiny, tiny little bit left over. That's fine. Right. So, <clears throat> if you remember, way back when we first started, I said I was going to use that little concrete area opposite our silo to store beets. Now, uh, a buddy of mine, Adam, has said that he put some beets in there and they disappeared and they went straight into the pigs. So I don't know if that's like an auto load area for beets for pigs. I guess we'll find out in just a second because we have a full trailer that we need to unload before we can get the rest of our beets out of the harvester. So let's see what happens. Ah, I didn't look. Ah, I nearly crashed. <laughs> this is why I look. On this map, you kind of have to because the traffic comes at... Uh, it's only going at 18 miles an hour, but it, you know, it comes up on you so quickly if you're not paying attention. So this is where I'm going to store my beets. Uh, let's just take a look at our animals. We have 48 litres of beets for our pigs. Let's see if that goes up once these beets go in. We've got a left side tip. So I need to uh, position the trailer right up against the side one there. There we go. No, they're not going up. That's fine. I, I thought it was a bit odd you know, um, for that to be the case, but, uh, but there we go. We have a load of beets. Maybe I'm, it'll something will happen if we uh, yeah, if we get in there with a with a, a shovel. Who knows? But I didn't believe it at the time. I thought it was a bit a bit of an odd thing to happen, and well, nothing's happened there. So. Get the rest of these beats done. I 
this last little strip. And uh, just think, if we hadn't quickly applied that uh, stage of fertiliser, we wouldn't even have made 12,000. I doubt we'd have even made 10,000. We've gained 30%. Uh, so that is an extra, what, three... 3,000 litres? Is that right? 12 divided by 4 is 3,000. Yeah, so we would have had a, around about 9,000 litres. Uh, and we ended up pushing it up to just over 12. Thanks to that uh, quick application of fertiliser there. And this time I'm going to look. <laughs> Nothing coming. And I'm stuck on something. What am I stuck on? Oh, God damn it! <laughs> go right let's get this back to the store and be done with it <laughs> bye bye beet harvester you will not be missed Oop, just bump that car there Sure that anyone coming around that corner knew we were on the way. There we go. So we have uh, done what we needed to do with the beets. Now we can top up our cows and just tidy up that little storage area a little bit. Let's just return this equipment. Someone else about to cause a collision for a change, not me. Just pulling out like that. These crazy European drivers. And having actually spent a bit of time in Europe, in mainland Europe, I can say that, you know... Yeah, it's kind of true. <laughs> it's not a cliche. I spent some time in Rome uh, several years ago. And, uh, my God, just about every single car you saw parked up on the streets had some form of body damage on it. Almost every single car had at least one panel that had been bashed or, or scraped or dented um, or completely ruined. <laughs> it was just a nightmare. And trying to cross the streets in Rome, scary, because red traffic lights do not mean stop in Italy. They kind of mean just carry on, but maybe maybe just check and see if someone's crossing the road while you're at it. You know? <laughs> yeah, I got nearly run over. I was there for six days and I was nearly run over three times. <laughs> just by cars, just boom. And not just that as well. I mean, Vespers everywhere. That's not a cliche either. You know, there, there were Vespers all over the place in Italy, just and they were just driving through the middle of uh, lanes of traffic as well. So you would get to a junction and you would see uh, a train of cars just sort of in the road, just at a junction waiting. And so you would step out from between some parked cars to cross between those uh, and get over the road. Yeah, you know, halfway down where you know that there's not going to be at least two lanes of traffic. You've only got to really pay attention to one lane of traffic that's moving. But you can't because you know you do that. No Vespa will literally just appear out of nowhere and flatten you. I saw you know Vespa. You know, I nearly got killed. <laughs> got killed by a Vespa driver rider doing that. Um, as one of the three times when I nearly got run over, as Vespa just appeared out literally out of nowhere. The tiniest of tiny gaps between the parked cars and the cars in the road. And uh, still, this guy just came whizzing down there at like 25 miles an hour on his Vespa. You know, so many wing mirrors were damaged, you know, as I was walking the streets, just looking at the, uh, the state of the traffic as well. From, uh, <clears throat> say, from Vespas just whizzing through traffic where there isn't really space and just going, ah, I can get through there. No, you can't. I'm going to do it anyway. And that was ba <laughs> that's basically... Uh, 
you know, Rome. And from what I understand, Paris is just as bad, although maybe not so much with the Vespers, but certainly the traffic in Paris is pretty bad. You know, um, you see all the dash cam footage of, uh, you know, places like Russia and Ukraine, and <clears throat> everybody has dash cams because everybody uh, <laughs> is susceptible to... Uh, insurance scams where people just literally throw themselves in front of cars to try and claim an insurance payout. It's just insane. Mainland Europe is is just mental when it comes to traffic. It's dangerous if you if you go there and you're completely uninitiated. You know, I'd heard stories of how bad things could be before I got to Rome, and you know, it's one thing hearing stories, but it's another when you actually experience it firsthand. It really is quite scary at times. So, uh, if you are ever thinking of going to Rome, forewarned is forearmed. Be very, very careful. And uh, don't just assume that just because the traffic lights are red that uh, you'll be safe to cross because odds are someone will go straight through those red lights. At least someone. Probably multiple cars. Like I said, red lights do not seem to have the same stop mechanic in Europe as they do everywhere else and wow my bucket is the hell is going on <laughs> uh, someone's fitted hydraulics to my tractor <laughs> it's like a low rider come on there we go <laughs> oh dear I just want to get a shovel full of beets there we go that I can now take to the pigs I need the engine running on that aggro star I think I might have done. And that's it. That's all we needed. We had 48 litres. I mean, a bit of we don't have any pigs, but we only needed less than 700 litres to completely fill that bar up, and it was practically empty. So those beets are going to last us a long, long time. We don't have to worry about beets for a very long time now. We just have to make sure we don't sell any of these now. As long as we don't sell them, we've got an ample supply of root crop for our pigs for the foreseeable future. Ooh. No, I'm crashing into everything today. I have to reposition that in a second. So, well, that was all of the money that I was going to use to buy another tree uh, gone. So we can't do that. That's a bit of a shame. Let's drop off the forks. There we go. Let's get our fortis cleaned and put away. I did leave that aggro star switched on. Careless. Beacons off, engine off. Okay, back to the aggro star. Let's put the trailer away. There we go. We need to do some ploughing, actually, so it's the fortis again, isn't it? We need to plough that beet field. Um, let's get this fortis uh, back out again, but we'll clean off the aggro star while we're at it. A little bit too close to the wall there. There we go. Let's give this a quick hose down. Then uh, I wonder what I'll do with that... Uh, with that field, I mean, I think I suppose the, let's use the other map, it's bigger, easier to see, we can zoom in. I think perhaps what might be best would be to kind of disregard this cut through here and maybe look at buying field 17 and then just combining it with field 13 into one field there and then just disregard that cut through. Let's take a wander over to uh, field 17 in a moment. Let's 
don't want to save just yet. Right, that's nice and clean. Let's just go and have a quick wander over the field 17. It's this cornfield here. In fact, I think I'm going to harvest this as a contract job. It'll give me an idea of how much it's going to set us back. We've got an access route just here. And we could always roll a bit back off the edge so that we could create a, a route going up the side and around the edge. Um, how much is this field? 57,000. 58,000. Um, yeah. Let's, uh, let's harvest this corn. Get a little bit of extra cash. Bring that field price down a touch. And I think this is the first field we should work towards purchasing. In which case, I'm going to hold off ploughing uh, field 17 for now. Until we've done some work on this one. This gives me a good chance to take a, a real look at the size of this field. And as I say, the borders around the, uh, the far edge. just create a nice little pathway down the side. I mean, we, I suppose technically we don't even need to, if we, the only time we're really going to need to get up to the other side now is if we're going to go and do some stuff with our orchard, we could always go all the way around the back or we've got that field route just there. If there's nothing on the crops there, then we can drive straight up that way. That's not a problem. But there is enough of a space around the edges of those fields to get through anyway. So, yeah, I think that's what we'll do then. We'll start working towards buying this field here, field 17. And uh, once we've got enough, we'll combine it with field 13 and turn this into one big field. May have to roll a little bit off the top of this field to line up with this one at the bottom. So we may even end up just creating a little bit of a side route anyway around the back of this field just so that we can match it up with the other one because we've got a little bit less space at the top of that one there because of the way the trees are laid out so yeah I think that's uh, I think that's what we'll do this will be our first purchased field it's a good size as well we we'll get quite a nice good return off this field I mean you can see even with this uh, combine and header, it still gave us uh, a decent amount of time to do it. So, yeah, I like that idea. Right, let's get into the uh, into the cab. See how tall this uh, <coughs> this corner is with this custom texture. I do get the feeling it's a little bit taller like this than it normally is. Not by much, but again, it might just be the, the seating position. This combine is obviously a little bit smaller than some of the, the larger combines that I do generally tend to use. So it might be that we're just sitting a little bit lower to the ground as well. I think it's probably a combination of both. <coughs> I need to clear my throat. Excuse me a second. <coughs> ah, that's a bit better. Oh, 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 oh. That's clumsy. I forgot to turn the blades back on. <laughs> it's not my it's not my crop, so it's not a major problem. Ah, I tell you, if we had the money, I'd have bought this field straight away, because we could have used this corn for our pigs, but alas we don't have we don't have the money for it yet and I don't have enough stuff to sell to raise 60,000 euros that's for certain but you know we get a really strong price for canola we've got a, a large amount there that we can sell just gonna cut my way through like this
hope that I'm driving in a pretty straight line. Yeah, seems to be. Um, yeah, I've got, if we get, we've got a nice, you know, little stockpile of canola. We've got some soybean as well, and we've got a really good, strong price already with soybean. But the other one is still going up, I think. I need to check on that, actually, see what, whether Mary's Farm has stopped going up. We could sell our soybean right now, but the biggest problem is we have that $300,000 debt with our loan. That does not help things at all. We really kind of do with that going away. I did think about uh, <laughs> asking Santa if there was any way we could bring that in, but... Uh, you know, you know, get a you know a loan de uh, deferral, but unfortunately, um, <laughs> this is a hard file. So, even if I did seriously entertain the notion of just wiping out our loan for Christmas, you know, I wouldn't be able to anyway. It's hard. Uh, money bo boxes do not work on hard. Everything on this farm has to be legitimate, and I think I would, uh, in the long run, I would probably feel that I've cheapened the experience a little bit if I had just wiped out our three hundred thousand dollar debt anyway so i'm not uh, i'm not too broken up about that we're just like i say we're just gonna have to work really hard for a while turn our fields over nice and quickly get some really good uh, crops some good volumes of crops some good prices and just keep rinsing and repeating until we're in a, a much better financial position uh, and this is another reason why you know i have no qualms with you know in expanding and increasing the size of our orchard you know, we've got a lot of a lot of finances you know, or a lot of financial issues that we need to resolve and if we find in the future that the orchard is too big and generating too much money we can always just sell those trees you know, get half of the cost of them back they're five grand each so we can sell the tree after however long we use it for get another get two and a half grand back lose a little bit of our hourly income so there's nothing to stop us from doing that as well but with our loan costs and our animal costs and our machinery costs you know and you know our fertilizer costs and our seed costs and where applicable our worker costs as well yeah, an orchard is definitely something that I think we definitely, definitely need. Let's see, we are about two thirds of the way through this field already. So we're making some decent time. Just a little bit of extra cash, if it's enough. Because I don't know if it will be enough or not. I'm hoping it will be. This will be a new tree. This will be tree number four for our uh, orchard. And I think with the job money plus a time bonus, I think we might just be able to scrape a positive bank balance of 5,000 euros, which will be all we need to get that extra tree. And then we'll immediately go and stick some manure on it and... Uh, and water it and get that extra little bit of uh, hourly income. Like I say, I want to start expanding our farm as as, uh, as quickly as I can and uh, start saving up towards getting that Deutz combine. I also want to try looking at lettuce as well on this farm. Uh, not lettuce, sorry, cucumber. Uh, we've got that, um, I think it's cucumbers. We've got that new greenhouse mod. Uh, I think I've actually got one. I've got it installed in my list of mods for this file. So once this contract's done, we'll have a quick look in the... Uh, in the placeables list and see if it is in there. See what kind of uh, hourly income that will produce and how much it's going to cost. Because I wouldn't mind getting a couple of greenhouses on this map as well. It would be quite nice to try out those new ones.
there. That's the 75% uh, mark on this field. quick drink there. Needed that. My throat is really dry. Recorded a few episodes back to back, so I've been talking quite a bit over the last few hours. It's also why I've been a little bit quieter this episode. I've been kind of running out of things to talk about, so apologies for that. Not my usual chatty self this, uh, this particular episode, but That'll, uh, that'll resolve itself after you know when we come back next time. I'm taking a break after this. shame we don't have a combine this size as a Deutz combine. Oh, that would be perfect for this map. It really would. I am kind of tempted as well to just buy a small header <laughs> for our for our Deutz rather than going with the uh, 7 point, 7.2 meter header I think it is that it comes with. Well, let's say that it comes with that we have to buy to go with it. Um, toying with the idea of just keeping a smaller header, something a little bit more manoeuvrable, and something this size as our corn header that we can fold up and transport. I won't go, I don't think, for the six meter corn. Well, I might do. I might get the six meter corn header. I don't know. I'll, I'll have to think about it. I mean, like I said, it's still a way off yet. We just do not have the funds. And we have no way of shortcutting the funds either. Even if we were to just, you know, go around and mow everything in sight and bale everything and turn it to silage bales. We'd still only get 980 euros per bale. The sheer number of bales we would need to do to be able to purchase that combine would be more than we could get in one round of, of literally mowing every blade of grass on this map that we could. So, uh, there we go. Oh yeah, we've got more than enough to get another tree. Uh, so, um, before we do that, let's just check out the greenhouses. Uh, placeables. So the standard greenhouses uh, are these ones here. Lettos, uh, lettuce and tomatoes. They give us 40 euros per hour. Uh, which I think, again, doubles up to 80 with the manure. Uh, 25 grand each. And then we've got the mod one. Uh, which is here. Oh, these are only 8,800. But they don't produce a huge amount, look. 19 euros per hour. That's not much. And that's cucumbers. Hmm. It's a shame we don't have just a fraction more money. I could look and see just how big these are. Maybe we could place one up by our apples. Which is, where is it? Here. Here's our little apple orchard. Maybe we could look at potentially putting a, a single greenhouse in just here, but I don't know if I want to do that. Or maybe put it in just here. Maybe take that tree out and use that space. I mean, that's quite a steep little embankment just there, so... Uh, question is, where do I put this next tree? I guess sort of about here. Give it a little spin. There we go. So, uh, we have another apple tree. Uh, let's go stick some manure and some water on it. And then that'll be the end of another episode. Where is our fortis? 
It's still back around here, isn't it? So having just spent all that time carefully putting the <laughs> front loader away, we're now going to uh, go and pick it back up again. But that should give us around 320, I think it's 80 per tree. Was it 80 per tree? Oh, it's 20 per uh, per hour, then we, and then it doubles to 40. So it's 40, 80, 120, 160. 160 euros per hour. So uh, that's not a bad little bit of income. It's not overly excessive, but it's uh, it's certainly enough to help make a dent. Our water trailer's up there, so we're going to need to uh, possibly get that refilled soon as well. I think that's almost empty. And we're going to need to bring it back, I think, so we can take care of our animals' water needs soon as well. All right, we're good to go. Raise up over the bridge. There we go. Should have seen that coming. There we go. So there is our new tree. Oops. Turned in a fraction too early there. Definite frame rate issues every time we get close to this building. Oh, I need about a thousand litres of, of poop. There we go. That's a little bit more than we need. I can dump the rest on one of the other trees. I may as well top all of them up while I'm here. I'm going to need to bring some more manure up here as well soon. I don't want to repeat of the last time where uh, we got completely wedged in there. That was uh, that was not fun. <laughs> Trying in vain to unhook ourselves from the ceiling. In the end, just having to reset the trailer back to the store. It was the only way out of there. It was completely completely wedged alright well we're pretty much out of time um, so just while we get this last little bit of manure and then water these trees uh, all that left is for me to say uh, thank you for watching uh, I don't think there'll be another episode now before New Year. Um, in fact, this episode may even have come out just after New Year. I'm honestly not entirely sure what the release schedule is. I think I've recorded three episodes today, so this one might come out after New Year. If that's the case, then I hope you had a happy New Year. Uh, if it's just before New Year, then I hope you have a happy New Year. <laughs> oh dear, trying to keep track of things in your head when... Uh, when you're tired and you haven't planned things out very carefully <laughs> in terms of release schedule uh, it does not help but uh, yeah, this is the end of another episode of, of uh, Deutz Farm here on Altenstein as I say, thanks for watching and uh, I will see you all again very soon <laughs>